this lake and the surrounding area of the land, it meant a lot to our Dene people. On this lake, there was like thousands and thousands of, of people here on this lake, around this lake. At Bistro Lake, we've got a really unique opportunity to have some type of indigenous protected and conserved area here. The area is a really biologically important area for a lot of different species, including caribou that are threatened. We find out there is a very, very important site here, quite, quite large, that stretches over several terraces along this place. And uh, we find out there is a quite, quite deep site and possibly quite old. I think it's important because once you find the connection there, you'll be able to understand the stories more. And maybe you'll even see a dream or something about what it was like back then, or what it can be like. We can retrieve some of the stories from, from uh, underneath the ground, and whatever we find that's it's like sacred or, or a treasure from back then, you know, all these things can help us regain our strength and to teach us something new. Archaeology has an interesting way of, of linking the past and bringing it to the present to remind ourselves of its importance and that we shouldn't forget where we come from. The sites go back at the lake at least several thousand years and then we are hoping at this site here that we're going to start excavating today that we will get some, some more information how the people left here and what, the, what they were hunting. Hopefully we'll find some stone tools or maybe some datable artifacts could give us a little bit more in detail what, how, how old is the site. See again, it has all the notching. It's like a scraper. This is like you swear on it to these little tiny small chipping. So most likely this is it's a piece of a tool. Hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, there used to be people living all over the lake. And mm -hmm. Like there's uh, people living here and mm -hmm. some people living there and mm -hmm. there was houses all over. And I'm quite sure there might be burial grounds too. Almost every test that we are digging here, it's, it's positive. We are finding either bone or like the small, small chips of flakes. Long time ago, my dad used to trap over here. Happy just, just to be at the site where my dad used to be. Even this hand cut with axe, it's just like a memory. We came across this cabin foundation that was Charlie's dad's cabin. And to see Charlie at his father's cabin on this island in the middle of Bisho Lake it was amazing. Caribou are really in a dire situation in Alberta. Uh, the 15 herds that we have that are managed by the province all of them are in decline and none of them are considered to be self-sustaining. When we combine traditional knowledge with Western science, they are mutually reinforcing. We've got caribou wildlife camera traps out. The location was specified by a Deneda member. We have the chance to stop this herd from continuing on this decline and actually give them the opportunity to grow in, the, in that population rather than just trying to keep them from the brink of extinction. My grandfather used to live here and even cook on that stove and he even had beds, wood table, homemade tables and everything. 
I love being here. It's so, it's so nice to be here. So it's so beautiful. A ranger station, indigenous guardians, elders and youth, academia, industry, government, other nations, all coming together to celebrate this amazing place and this amazing collaboration that we've come together to be able to have a meaningful, direct way of protecting our land and what's important to not only us, but all Albertans and all Canadians and everyone across the world. And, and as we move into the sub-regional planning process, we really want to partner with the community and really want to understand the interests of the community members. And I think for me, that's very much why I'm here this week up here at Bistu Lake, is to sit down with the elders and to sit down with community leadership and, and with their technicians and, and with Indigenous scientists and really understand, you know, where we can find balance. And we want to bring everyone together in a place uh, that's still intact, still pristine like Bistro Lake. And we want to be able to work together and do this together through a guardian program or having our people on the land, having our community members revitalize this place. It's a symbiotic relationship. So there's been an opportunity where, you know, all three governments have been able to come together and really try to make something happen here to protect this area. All Albertans and Canadians can, can benefit from um, a healthy landscape in this corner of the province. There's a real opportunity here as one of the last sort of pristine unprotected frontiers for us to do something meaningful so that generations to come can see what you know, a, a pristine boreal forest really looks like that's you know, been protected and, and been stewarded uh, in the right way to maintain cultural values, to maintain values of, of land stewardship and, and you know, clean water and, and nature and you know, viable animal populations. You know, hope for the greater days where people can live among here and laugh with each other, play with each other, go hunting with each other, go fishing with each other, and have a good life here together. We need that part to regain our strength back to this, to this lake and to regain our culture. It's coming from my heart, I said, it's not only me. It's from the ancestors that used to live here. They were here today, they would say the same thing. Once we heal ourselves, the land will heal and the water will heal. But I want to see things regain, restore, and uh, retrieve our, our land the way that our land treated us back then. <laughs>